guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. It's not date or time specific, so whenever you come upon it, if it speaks to you, it could be your message at that time. Welcome all cross watchers, and for those of you who are brand new to the channel, I'm glad you dropped in. Uh, we do have the full moon in Sagittarius coming up on the 23rd. We are now in Gemini season, and um, two days after the full moon, on the 25th, I believe, Jupiter moves into Gemini. So lots of energy shifting toward the end of the month. Just wanted to make you aware. And I'm going to pull from Cosmic Journey to activate the reading. You get card 25. I love the... Um, that reduces to a seven. I love the spirituality of that. It says the phoenix rises into joyful abundance. And Jupiter in Gemini, that's the calling card, joyful abundance. Wow. Uh, very nice synchronicity for you. I love when that happens. So let me jump in. I'm pulling my twin flame spread. I'm going to tell you the positions of the cards and my overall impressions. Then we'll get the details from the clarifiers. Here we go. Seven of Pentacles. So the present energy between the two of you, what's happening? Not a whole lot. Um, the Seven of Pentacles is requiring patience. Seeds have been planted, but the garden kind of has to grow organically. You are coming in here. Wow. Um, Emperor energy. It looks to me and your person four of swords, some healing karmic challenge for you is getting over the heartache. Um, karmic challenge for your person is what is it that they need to see? There's something that the Ace of Swords, all the Aces are gifts from spirit. That's why it's like a hand coming in from the ether. Um, and it's, it's a gift of insight, like an aha moment, some form of an awareness that, or a truth that's trying to come in. And your person here um, may be taking some time away and closing them, you know, sort of um, taking time to kind of get quiet with themselves and their karmic challenge is seeing things as they are and not as they want them to be. So that's very interesting. Oof, Hierophant in the opportunity and divine guidance is the fool. So there is some kind of new chapter or leaping into um, the, a new chapter, something that may be more committed, may have questions around your beliefs around conventional committed relationships. So let's see where we go. Seven of Pentacles. So this is like your shared energy. Wow. King of Cups, Eight of Swords, Page, uh, page of Cups. I don't feel your person has told you how they felt or um, they haven't shared their feelings. This is some stuck energy, which is why it's like the overall is it will happen when it happens. These things take time. Relationships grow organically. Feelings are shared in the time that they're meant to. Laws of nature kind of timing, right? But it, there's a little bit of a block here because the feelings are there. Um, they're just not being shared. They're kind of being kept um, under wraps for now, which may be problematic. So let's see the emperor. Which, this is now where things stand for you in terms of this connection. Six of swords, the moon. Yeah, when you don't know where you stand with somebody or how they feel, in this case, a divine masculine, it's very unnerving. It's very unnerving. You kind of, um, you know, what you can't see, what you don't know, um, leaves you with lots of unanswered questions, leaves you feeling vulnerable to getting hurt even. So I'm feeling like part of the energy of the um, hanged man here is about... Well, I'm just going to wait it out. I'm, I'm just going to observe from a safe vantage point. 
because I'm not sure where I'm headed with this person, right? Are we kind of able to move beyond to calmer waters, to peace of mind, to some form of tranquility here, or is something unfolding that I can't see that could could really cause me some pain. So I feel the hanged man is you taking that time out, um, pressing pause to observe from that 30,000 foot view and making sure that you're looking at the situation from all angles. I do feel like you wanna move forward in the connection, but I'm not sure that you're trusting that you're headed to something um, more serene and peaceful because you don't know where you stand with this person. So let's see the four, or if you feel like you know where you stand, there are, there are, um, there are moments where you're not necessarily sure that this person ha has emotional availability for this relationship. So let's see the four of swords for your person, page of pentacles, ace of swords, there it is. Nine of Swords. I feel like this person um, has is really slowed everything down. I feel they've kind of gone to ground. They're definitely in some deep reflection. That Ace of Swords is here, but it's presenting a karmic challenge because there's a truth that this person is aware of, but that they fear or that that causes them um, undue anxiety, restlessness. Um, almost a sense of um, like impending doom, lots of worry around that nine of swords. So they've slowed everything down. You want to get beyond it, but you're not sure um, that that's where things are headed. So let's look at your karmic challenge with the three of swords. The sun. The world, three major arcana here, um, landing on the three of swords. So that's pretty life changing. It feels to me like you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. You're waiting for the whole thing to fall apart, right? You 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 want to be able to trust this person, but it feels like you are left feeling very exposed and vulnerable. You're not really sure how they feel about you, or if you believe that they love you, you're not hearing it and it's not showing up on the regular for some reason. And so there's some stuck energy as a result. And it feels like with that world card, we're looking at Saturn, um, you know, endings, but new beginnings, the happiness that comes from being in a new cycle and getting rid of something that just sort of has outlived its purpose and its usefulness. Um, Saturn wants to teach us lessons and oftentimes we learn them the hard and painful way. So the tower underneath is sort of in your unconscious awareness, there's this concern that things might not be as stable and sustainable as you want them to be. You want to be happy, but your karmic challenge is in, right? Understanding, well, I've already learned a lot of lessons and so I don't need to keep going back to the painful ones. There is growth from that. I don't have to repeat them. Um, and unless or until you can kind of offload the tower energy of the past or the pain of the past, the three of swords, I don't feel that you're living with pain from this connection. Well, some of you could be, it's a general reading, but I feel like it's, it's, it's where it's your go-to. Your karmic challenge is always a go-to, is always something that you've experienced before in some form of a negative karmic way, and it comes back around, and you're either gonna learn the lesson and go on to be happy, or you're not gonna learn it and everything is gonna you know, fall apart. So I'm feeling like that's your karmic challenge, is to sort of determine right now where things stand, are you feeling it's more likely to turn in a positive direction or in a negative direction? Your person in their karmic challenge has this Ace of Swords. Wow. Yeah. This person sees the truth of a situation, they're in this energy of, of reevaluating it, reassessing, um, 
You know, it, it feels very Zen and meditative, a little healing even, but it feels like this person has really slowed down because they're taking stock of their truth, but it's kind of very, it's, agi it's agitating them, causing them stress and anxiety. And so that Ace of Swords comes back in their karmic challenge and what they see and know to be true is they want this connection. They want everything it has to offer, right? They have to gather up the will to sort of push forward and be triumphant and victorious and have the relationship of their dreams that's mutual and mutually supportive, where there's mutual generosity, where we give as well as we receive. It just feels like their challenge is in accepting that truth, that that is what they want. Remember I said something like seeing things as how they are instead of how you want them to be. Well, in this case, it's a little twist on a theme here because it's seeing things, seeing the truth of how things really are and not what you fear them to be. What, not what you're trying to deny. My goodness. So the opportunity is um, the Hierophant. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, the opportunity is to explore your beliefs around conventional committed relationships. What does it take to keep it, right? What are the obligations and responsibilities? How do we weather any drama, any tension, any conflict? How do we lead with love? So this is the opportunity in your relationship is to explore your beliefs. And that might be a part of what's happening here is that this person wants wants what you want but they don't believe that they can have it they don't believe that it really exists and so that's the opportunity is to explore those beliefs and then we have the divine guidance is the fool that is uranus um, the great awakener it's where we go on faith yes there it is Fool, the magician, six of wands, it's no magic trick, guys, and the hierophant. Right? If you want to manifest your way to a mutual understanding, finding the common ground, well, what beliefs do we share? What do what do we kind of agree on? The six of wands is another victory card, right? Like we don't need to fight this out. We don't need to duke it out. It's not a you're right, I'm wrong, or I'm right, you're wrong. It's about finding where we kind of meet in the middle and forging a win-win outcome. And on some level, we've got to just go on faith. That's what's being manifested here. Your divine guidance says you guys have everything you need to manifest the kind of relationship you know, whatever it means to you, it's going to be different for everybody. And sometimes there are, you know, religious differences and different beliefs around marriage, right? Or living together even. So it's a, I really feel like what is holding both of you up here is your fears of the unknown is, you know, <laughs> because you haven't really had the, that depth of conversation or communion, or at least exploration about where you kind of have some measure of agreement versus where you differ. And if you focus on where, where you see things alike, where you have common ground, that's the jumping off point. That, that's when you go, okay, that's good enough, I'm in. I'm put, pushing all my chips in. It, it just feels like spirit's trying to tell you. You already have everything you need. You just need to find where you are in agreement, where you have the common ground, where you can meet in the middle, and then go from there. Wow. And I love your, I love your oracle. The phoenix rises into joyful abundance. I see that path here for you. Um, there is a little bit of, you both have a tendency toward a little bit of anxious catastrophizing, um, but it's based on f things that you don't know, and you don't know because maybe you haven't asked, or if you have asked, maybe the conversation hasn't been 
um, fully explored, fully tapped in a way that says, well, you know, where are we in agreement? So instead of focusing on where you're not in agreement, if that makes sense, I'm just trying to show you that there's a message here saying there's probably more agreement than meets the eye but you're focused on where things might not, not be in agreement or alignment. Um, so I am gonna take this to the extended. I wanna see this person here, this emperor, king of cups person, um, and we're gonna explore their energy a little bit more. So if you want to follow me, the links are below, but um, before I give you the astrology, if you enjoy my readings, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Once you've subscribed, be sure to click the little notification bell so you don't miss new readings. Here's what we have for you, my friends. King of Cups is Scorpio. Um, Page of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. The Emperor is Aries. We have the Moon is Pisces, as is the Hanged Man. This is Neptune, which rules Pisces. Over here, we have the Knight of Pentacles. Slow and steady wins the race. That is Virgo energy. The sun is the sun, rules Leo. The world is Saturn, Aquarius, and Capricorn. Um, the tower is Mars, which rules Aries. Chariot, Cancerian energy. There's your energy. Um, Hierophant comes out twice. That is Taurus, more Pisces in the Knight of Cups. More Taurus in the King of Pentacles. The Fool is Uranus, which rules Aquarius. The Magician is Mercury, Virgo, and Gemini. And as I said, we're now in Gemini season. And that's what I have for you. So I'm headed to the Extended to explore what's going on with this person. Maybe you'll get some more insight as to what they're really processing, how they really feel about you, what are their intentions, um, hidden energy is something you can't see but might want to know. Could be very helpful. And their message to you. What do they want you to know? Okay, that's what I have for you. I'll see you over the extended. Bye for now.